All right, guys. Technically, this is part four of the build video series for the FMS MOA. Um, but the thing is about this MOA, we got, I don't know, like 85% of it done. The most of it's left is just going to be radio setup. Uh, we just got the ailerons mechanically attached. We're going to attach the rudder and elevator. Um, servos are centered, but then these ones kind of push as you're trying to put them together. So we may need to adjust those just a little bit. So for now, we know that these are centered. So what we're going to do is we're just basically going to, we use the chip clip idea. That's actually a pretty good idea. And uh, what you'll do is you just more or less hold the, hold the surface where it needs to be. And then you can sit here and turn this control. Oh, I hate it when they turn in tight like that. Um, when they turn in tight like that, sometimes it's easier to grab like a pair of forceps or pliers. And you can um, brace the linkage so that it doesn't break off on you. Oh yeah, that's really going firm. I don't like that. But I don't really have a choice, so. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the inside most hole, provided I can get it there without this thing breaking. It feels like it wants to break. And, um, but it is going, so I guess I'm going to cross my fingers, hope it goes. Okay, so I've got to get all the way down. Okay, actually one little bit from there. Okay, so you see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of siding down the, the dot and getting that the right direction. Actually, one more half turn, I think we were there. You notice I overshot it. That was sort of an accident, but it was a happy accident. If you overshoot, then that will thread the hole open um, on this control adapter. So now I can just pop this through the hole. It's a very obvious process. And then we'll put this rubber keeper way up toward the front. And at this point, you know, if you bump the server or whatever, you've already made your alignment. Okay, now same thing for the elevator. It's on this side. So I'm just going to take the elevator and do like what that guy recommended. It's actually a really good idea. It makes it a lot easier. Um, provided you already have your servos centered, of course. So now these are, these are the bent ones. So I can run those down the length of the, the piece, but it's going to make it hard to see. So I'm going to go ahead and angle. Clamp it on there nice and tight. Okay. So now I should just be able to twist this. And all I'm doing is I'm just twisting this to run it in on the threads to where it's lined up with the bottom hole. When I get this down there in proximity, and that's pretty well pretty well where it needs to be. So I'm going to unclamp from that. Go ahead and open up the little clevis adapter, get it to the correct hole, snap it through, slide the little rubber uh, holes to the end or near the end. You don't want them all the way at the end because they can actually bind things up a little bit. At least that's been my luck. Okay, so I shouldn't need the chip clip anymore. Put it that way. All right, so now the receiver's on, or transmitter's on rather. Let's see how things center up. Let me go ahead and plug it in. Then we'll get the stabilizer activated and go on from there. So for now, we have our little bind plug adapter. We could pull that out, but for now, since we're still kind of working on things, I'm just going to slide this back and tuck it in to this cavity um, so that it's accessible without tons and tons of effort. And um, I'm going to see how this battery, this is the 1300 milliamp 2S 30C. Uh, Admiral battery, typo in this case, which stands for lithium polymer, in case you guys didn't already know that. I'm going to slide this in. It looks like we have quite a bit of room forward and backward now. It's got a long lead on it, so I'm a little nervous that might cause me some grief, but I guess we'll find out. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and plug this in, let it initiate. So it looks like this one, we kind of screwed that up a little bit. 
This one's nice. The elevator and rudder are really close. The rudder is just about as good as it's going to get, I think. And the horizontal stab, I think we're, I think we're good. It's allowed to have a little bit of pivot play on it, which I'm not crazy about. Elevator needs to be rotated. It's going the wrong way. The rudder also needs to be rotated. Stabilizer is not turning on and off yet. That can be symptomatic of a couple of different things. So I'll play with that here in a minute. Uh, but for now, let's fix this. This control surface has popped up. So I want to go ahead and uh, detach that side. And we're going to bring it back uh, a couple turns probably. We'll just pop this open. We'll just run it back. We'll try one. We'll try two. We'll see if that's enough. Nope, we need uh, another half again probably. We'll see if that does it. And just drive fit it before you get all back together. And sometimes you got to kind of feel the other side to verify. The first control surface that you're going to go and change is going to be this one anyway. Because you almost always got a little bit of aileron trim. Okay. So that's pretty well lined up. So at least we're starting from a neutral control surface. Um, okay, so now just siding down the length of it. You can see we're just lined up pretty good there. Nice and smooth. Okay, let's see how our ailerons are. Yep, they're also backward. Why would they be the straight? Let's switch them all. So the way we're going to do that is throw our cuts on just so you know. We're going to go into our system setup, or servo setup. Then we're going to go travel. We're going to go to reverse. And every radio is a little bit different. We're going to change right aileron, elevator, rudder, and left aileron. Okay, so now that rolls us, rolls us, elevates us, down. Yep. All right, so they're all going in the correct direction. Up, down, roll left. Roll right, up, and down. And it looks like we actually might want to adjust this um, just a little bit because you'll notice, I don't, I don't know if you guys can tell in the video, but it looks like the throw up, throw down are not quite even. I think I want to bring the elevator, actually I want to extend it just a hair. It's throw up, it's still on, just double check that before you let go of a control. So I'm going to actually just slide this back. Open this out. It's going on plug, plug the clevis. And I'm actually going to shoot this clevis out. We'll go out like one. One turn, we'll see if that does enough. I think it's probably going to be about right. Okay. That seems like it's going to be a little bit more even now. So let's see how it looks. Up. Yeah. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. I mean, it's going to be fine because the glider, you're probably going to want it to be trimmed downward a little bit anyway. Actually, I might I might go yet another, another one turn. Problem is, if you leave all your trims for electrical trims later, then you, especially when you're using a stabilizer, it can really screw with you. Because you'll end up with trimming enough that uh, the stabilizer interprets that as input from, from you as the pilot. And so what ends up happening is you, you defeat your stabilizer with your trim setting. So I've heard some people say like three clicks or whatever, and I'm like, I don't think it's that sensitive. But so I'm just moving left and right. Looks like we need to get that over just a, just a little bit more too. And the more you fine-tune it now, the less you're going to have to fight it once you get up in the air. It's almost always worth it to do this on the ground, um, even if it is 1.45 in the morning on a weeknight. Which kind of sucks. But who needs to sleep anyway, right? Sleeping's for losers. People would like to be safe. Oh, that's pretty good right there. Sweet. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and twist this just a little bit to get centered. Okay, okay get that snap back together. Okay, 
sweet. So now everything is nice and centered. I mean, as imperfectly as you could do it as an imperfect person. Maximum amount of curls on all the control surfaces. And one last verification of direction of travel. Up. Yaw, yaw. Roll, roll. Flaps. Spoilers. Okay, cool. And there's not really a right way or wrong way. I just want the neutral position, which is all the way back for me typically, to be neutral. And then still work as ailerons, still work as ailerons, and then I can program in differential because I have these both as separate channels. And uh, differential helps with adverse yaw. Um, also, I can tie in um, rudder and aileron. I might turn on just, just to begin with like 25%. Just turning it on. If I roll this way, it's going to yaw. Roll this way, it's going to yaw. Very good. And then no counter aileron input. Okay, so now we need to figure out why the stabilizer is not turning on. This happens a lot. Uh, there's a delta and V tail setting, and usually you have to flip both of them or neither of them, and then that will allow the stabilizer to come active. So I'm going to go ahead and just. Do that real quick. Even though we're not V-tail, we're going to turn that on and we're going to turn this on. Come on. Okay, so I just got it. So now it's not on, but now it's on. And intensity off. Okay, so what I want to do is I want this switch when in this up position to be on. So currently the stabilizer is on at the bottom position and the intensity is gauged by that. So you can go servo setup. In our case, you can move the control stick on a DX18. You can see where it moves on here. So you can go to the monitor. It's auxiliary three. We want to set that to 150% of the throw up, move it down, 150% up and down. Then I want to go to travel and switch this to reverse. And I want to go to gear, switch gear. Now my stabilization is on with, of course, everything working, not necessarily the correct direction, but still working. Intensity all the way, off, on, off, on. All the way down, slowly increasing, slowly decreasing. Okay, you see how that works, guys? Pretty straightforward. So now, uh, also we want to make sure that the flap around is supported, and this is how you can tell. Stabilization all the way up, just so you can see it real easy. Turn your flaps up or down, doesn't matter. Make sure that they both correct. Also, make sure that your ailerons both work. And that's how you can tell that you have flap around support activated. Off. Now, at this point, we need to rotate some of the axes because right now your stabilizer is going the wrong way. So let's turn it on. Let's see what way it goes. Up is down. That's bad. That's correct. Whatever direction you move the plane, you want the control surface to go that direction. So watch this. Up, that's wrong. Watch this. Up, that's wrong. So we have. Whoa, that's, that's convenient. Both are wrong. That takes effort. So now we need to flip some dip switches here to switch a direction. And there's everything but rudder needs to switch. So elevator needs to switch. And then ailerons need to switch. Okay. So now, up is up, up is up. Up is up, down is down, left, right. So what's going to happen is as the wing pushes its wing up, the aileron is going to fight it. It's going to fight it. Up is up, down is down. So as the wing, as the pitch of the craft is pushed up, the airplane is going to try to correct for it. And as the plane is trying to yaw, like let's say you're going like this, and it wants to start falling, it's going to try to correct. So stabilization working, off, on, off. Now let's make sure our direction of travel is still correct. Sometimes you can corrupt that with those settings. So we know the stabilizer is working right. 
We're rolling correct. We're rolling correct. You notice I lean my body. It's just a habit. I've learned to do that over time. It's helped me to process the direction because after I crashed my grandpa's plane that he had like 60 hours and I learned I need to have a more effective method for that. Now, let's also look at I need to lay this down. I think I, I don't have these quite exactly true. It's hard to tell because the thing is kind of moving around a little bit. Looks like this needs to come up and this needs to go down just a little teeny bit, but I'm not sure if I want to try to do that mechanically. That's a pretty small adjustment. But you guys get the idea. I might go ahead and fine tune that last little bit. Um, see how this fits in here and let's check the CG real quick. Okay, so the thing is hollow in there, so that's kind of nice. So I think we're going to fit okay. Oh yeah, that's beautiful, guys. We'll turn down the stabilization a little bit. I try to tighten these screws just a little bit now that we've got everything come together. Don't feel like they need to go anymore, that's good. Alright guys, there you have it. What a pretty plane. It's really cool. I'm super excited to fly this thing. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time get these ailerons exactly where I want them. Um, center of gravity markings are here and here, and here and here. I'm going to go ahead and just hold my finger on it, right in the center, and boy, look at that, guys. That's pretty darn good. It's not perfect, but it's good. Perfect on this plane would be a little bit nose down, in my opinion. It's an opinion thing, of course. So what I can do is I'm just going to slide that battery forward just a little teeny bit. That should make a pretty big difference on this plane. So I would say that we're probably pretty good there. So we've got just, just a touchdown. Down there. So this thing's ready to fly. And uh, I really appreciate you guys sticking in there and watching through these long videos. Stabilizer's off, by the way. Um, this thing is going to fly cool. It's going to be awesome. So, and honestly, I just, I didn't feel like the videos did it justice. And um, that's why I had to buy it. Hope you guys liked it. I uh, have some flight videos coming out in just the very near future. And uh, if all goes as planned, this thing's going to have a big, big brother here pretty soon. And it may be a pure glider. It may be a motorized glider. not 100% sure, but it's going to be awesome. And uh, I think this one's going to be a pretty good glider, too, for $100. Um, shipped, Motion RC ships North America. I can't speak for anybody else if you're in UK or Russia or something like that. It may not ship for free, but it's going to be awesome. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe.